Germany more than half a century ago. <laughs> it is always a big pleasure to be part of a group where the average age is below my own. <laughs> so thank you very much. I have been working with Namibians since 1983, and I could have consider myself as part three, and I could have consider myself as part of the struggle for liberation. So I had the privilege to be able to choose to be African. You're just working with the color. <laughs> Africa is for me the continent of the wide open spaces, where everything is allowed that is not explicitly forbidden. While in Europe everything is for forbidden if it is not explicitly allowed. I think that we in Africa we have many more opportunities than the so-called developed countries because we have not yet done all the mistakes they have done. I find it also fascinating to be part of the war against poverty and I think this declaration of war has been overdue for quite some years now. In the chance of my life to be part of a society that has the potential to create more justice and more equal opportunities resulting in more peace and stability for myself and the following generations. And that at times when the world seems to fall apart, we can do better. Electricity from decentralized, electricity from decentralized renewable sources can be a means to do better. It can be a means to create more opportunities for more people. For those who not yet have got it, we are actually in a crisis. This curve is the demand of electricity over the coming years. And this is how much we have, excluding South Africa, because there they also do have a crisis. Our current structure of supply functions like this. We are importing around about 60% of our electricity and our utility generates just below 40%, mainly in Ruakan. Then in between, we have the REDS, the regional electricity distributors, and the municipalities, who are in fact retailers of electricity. They are distributing the electricity that they buy and bulk from the big suppliers. Then we have all the users, like you and me. And then comes the, the power with the capital P from top to down. Comes from top to down. <laughs> and what happens with the money? It goes off the country. An idea how much it is? Last financial year it was 2.4 billion. And what happens to it? It goes out of the country and you never see it again. Now let me take you to dreamland. Lean back and say it is December 2015 and you're doing your tax declaration. And you actually find out everything has been paid. Your insurances have been paid, your clothes account has been paid, even your TV license has been paid, everything has been paid. And you still have 100,000. I said it's dreamland, huh? But you still have 100,000. <laughs> Now, what do you do with a hundred dollars? It's too little to buy a car for, and it is too much to go to holiday for. So let's say you bring it to the bank. The bank gives you four and a half to five and a half percent interest, which is almost like inflation, so you don't lose too much. But what actually happens to that money? I mean, it does not stay in that branch where you are accredited in that safe until you come next year and say, please give me my money plus the interest. Actually, it becomes a line in the computer and it goes to South Africa where it forms part of a huge chunk. Now our national utility goes to the manager of that huge chunk of money and says, please, can you give me money to build a power station? And the manager says, yeah, why not? If your finance minister countersigns, meaning that he pays if you don't pay, I give you 30 billion at nine and a quarter percent interest. Nine and a quarter percent interest accrues seven, 2.77 billion a year in interest payment alone. All right, they sign, they sign. Then come the financial advisors, the technical advisors, the world. Blah, blah. At the end of the day, we may be lucky to have 20 to 25 billion worth of infrastructure generating and distributing electricity in the country. And then our national utility goes to the ECB, to the Electricity Control Board and says, my production cost, my generation cost has actually risen. 
to be honest, it has doubled. And they send you an invoice. And they say, dear user, unfortunately, my production cost has doubled, so you must pay double now. And you have exactly two choices. Either you pay or you go out of business. And this is exactly what is happening, and that is, that is what is going to happen if we do not take care. Now, I will show you what you can do. Oh, I forgot. After 20 years, that infrastructure will still belong to that centralized system. And your grandchildren will still pay for that infrastructure. Whereas, if you would be allowed, I said it's dreamland, but you're working, you're working for it, to put that 100,000 on your roof and generate electricity, getting a price that justifies your investment, then your grandchildren can go and study from the money that you are generating on the roof. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the core point of our electricity prices. We can solve it easily. The technology is there, the knowledge of our administration is there, even the money is there. It's not a problem. We only have to decide whether you, we want to have to be electricity coming with a capital P from top down, or whether we want to make it something that goes bottom up. The recommended structure is that we might still have to import something, at least in the first few years. And we still want our, general, our national utility to generate a lot of electricity in Wakana and elsewhere, because they can invest in decentralized renewable sources like anybody else can. We still need grants and municipalities. We still need somebody who puts electricity in the form that you can use it in your house. And of course, we still need all the Afionas down like you and me. <laughs> but who says that we cannot produce and sell electricity to our reds and municipalities? And who says that reds and municipalities cannot deal with electricity with each other? If there's a lot of wind in Little Reds and no sun in Cape Manzouk, they can sell to Cape Manzouk. And if there's, for once, no wind in Little Reds, then they can sell solar energy that is generated in Cape Manzouk back to them. And so we could have a national market where we exchange electricity with each other, from the smallest level that you and, like you and my house, to higher and bigger levels. Reds and municipalities can also invest and produce surplus and sell the surplus back to our national utility. And national utility may, if necessary, still have to import some electricity. I'm not saying that is excluded, but I'm quite sure that over time we will actually become a net exporter of electricity to the benefit of this country. A instead of exporting 2.4 billion, buying ready-made electricity from Mozambique, South Africa, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, and thus financing that they build their infrastructure. Now, what would happen to the money? The money would be circulating. Now imagine 2.4 billion last year, 3 billion budgeted this year to circulate among Namibians. How much wealth could be created? It's a big amount of money. There we go. This is our national transmission system. It has one backbone north-south, two to the west, and one to the east. And then it has so-called Caprivi connector. That thing costs about three and a half billion. That is 3,500 million Namibian dollars. And it does not generate a single kilowatt hour. Actually, the state of the art. Direct current, almost no losses, wonderful. It can carry maximum 600 regularly in the moment with a setup 300 megawatts at a time. It has never carried eight, more than 80 megawatts, and regularly it ca carries 50 megawatts. But it enables the national electricity trader to buy electricity <coughs> when it's cheap in Zambia and sell it to Botswana, or buy it in Botswana and sell it in Angola, or buy it in Zambia and sell it to Namibia. Why do we not invest that kind of money in strengthening our own backbone? And I'm asking, why not like this? Why cannot everybody who has the knowledge and the means contribute to the national grid? Some people say that is not safe, security of supply. Excuse me. When we have a grid like this and it has only one line coming in from there, if there's a fake fire here, or if there are some other problems in the south, they are, it will be cut off. But this one is like a red one. You can cut it off. This portion will still work, and this portion will also still work. And what is the most important point? It will distribute the money to you and me. 
to everybody who could use it better. And if you can see those ones, we could be a net exporter. Namibia's renewable energy potential is substantial. Do you know how, many, how much we have? Do you have an idea? That is what we would have if we would cover every square centimeter of Namibia with solar panels now. Anybody have an idea how much we use? <coughs> 20. Now, how much space would it take to create 20? So much. Now, of course, we wouldn't put all the 20 here. We would put some here, some there, some there, some there, where you are. Now we come to people and wealth in Namibia. You can see that 87% of Namibians are actually earning below, it was 2009 where it was 4,600. So with inflation, you can say below 6,000 Namibian dollars now, 6,400. Now you all know from your own pocket how difficult it is to bring through a family for five to 6,000 Namibian dollars. So we have 13% that earn between four, six, or let's say 6,000 and about 15,000 in today's money. <coughs> And what happens is that the rich people up here, they go out of the grid. You know certain supermarkets and other places, they become 100% self-sufficient in, in energy supply. And people down here, they also go out of the grid because, because they're losing their houses. Look in the newspapers and the classified articles, more and more people are losing their houses because they cannot uh, pay municipal bills anymore. So, how many people in five years' time will still be able to afford electricity if prices are doubling and, inf and inflation bites? I think that 50% of the Namibian population, of the Namibian households, is a realistic target for users who could use, produce their own electricity and contribute to the electricity consumption of their neighbors. And others could start using island solutions where they are not connected to the grid. And half of our population could directly benefit from renewable energy tariffs and net metering, plus all the secondary jobs created. And this one really scares me. Everybody knows that poor people have more children than rich people. <laughs> Why? Because in a rural area, a child is a labor force. It's something that you need. In the city, a child is a cost factor that you are trying to avoid. <laughs> So it might soon be that we may have 90% of the population which is excluded actually from having disposable income and only 10%. Now how can we expect these to carry through our centralized top-down system? It will just not happen. Especially not when we allow prices to double. Now we need to discuss a new role for our national monopolistic utility. I think they can manage supply and demand on national level. They can also manage the transition from Namibia as an electricity importing country to an electricity exporting country. And they can earn an income by buying electricity, cheap, renewable electricity from Namibians and sell it to other people in the Southern African region. They can also assist municipalities and communities to become self-sufficient and to become also exporter. Did you know, if you would cover every northern bent roof in Vinto with solar panels. Vinto would be a power station and a money spiller. We need also a structural reform. Since before independence, small communities like Uzakos and Kalibeb and all these ones, they have been cross-subsidizing the municipal services with the income that they were generating from water and electricity. They were buying electricity cheap from a wholesaler and they were selling it with the market. But this has to come to an end because they cannot increase the prices simply because of people cannot pay it anymore. <coughs> Even if they would like to, they can't pay it anymore. So the times when municipalities could use that surplus to cross-subsidize their operations is over. Now comes the most important slide. How do we finance the whole show? If our new president, who has declared war against poverty, cuts the ribbon of a conventional energy uh, power plant, I mean coal, gas, oil, nuclear, whatever, from that moment the price will rise because the very source of energy is limited. Everybody wants it. 
We can now think maybe it will rise so fast or only so fast, but that makes only the consultants rich. Nobody who knows this business is in any doubt that the price per kilowatt hour will be rising. If you open the power station, uh, a power station that is based on renewables, the price will fall, provided our gen we get a tariff that satisfies our generation cost. So what we need to finance is only this triangular. We are generating electricity at $2 per kilowatt hour, but the market only gives you $1. So that fund would supply you with $1 per kilowatt hour. A little bit later, maybe your, the market gives you, let's say, $130, and you're producing for $170, you would still get $0.40 cents per kilowatt hour. You understand? The concept is to give you an insurance against losses. You need to invest your own money. You need to run your own show. But we, provided I would be the manager of that fund, we secure you. You don't make any losses. And like any insurance, it has a premium. And that means after you make profits, the fund wants 50% back. And 50% you can keep. Now, who of you would be prepared to invest in an electricity generation plant under these conditions? That is very encouraging. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, just to leave you with something that is easy to remember. This little black dot stands for the annual global energy demand. All energy. I don't mean only electricity. I also mean liquid fuels. This little white ring there stands for the global uranium resources, resources. This one for the gas resources. And this one for the petroleum reserves. And this for the global coal reserves. And this, anybody have a guess? Solar. It doesn't shine anywhere, you know. But this is the solar energy that we are getting for free every day. So, let's stop doing this. Uh, sorry, doing this. That's what we're actually doing at the moment. And that's why we need to change the concept. We need to change our concept of energy generation and distribution from a top-down uh, system with a capital P to a bottom-up where everybody can participate. Thank you very much for your attention.